Do you guys, this is a good question. I've got to take, Richie, we'll get yours too. Omar, appreciate the love here. Do you think Norvell was always an average level coach and that the talent at FSU masked his horrible coaching? So my answer, my quick answer to that would be no. Like, I don't think so. Um, you know, people want to, people want to yell at Jimbo for, um, well, you know, what did he do without Jameis and, and all those other guys on the 13 team? Well, part of coaching in college football is assembling a roster. And yeah. so Norvell absolutely gets credit for bringing those guys in. And I know that it's really trendy to say like, oh, we just got a bunch of one-year rentals, but that's not really what he did. Keon, one-year rental. Braden Fisk, one-year rental. I get that. But most of those transfers were guys with like zero production or they were playing at a, a, a D2 level, like an Albany or whatever, and and they stayed for a couple of years. Johnny Wilson a couple of years. Um Trey Benson. You know, you know, yeah, Benson a couple of years. Jordan was here for four years. Um, and so, yeah, I, I don't know that I would buy that. I don't know that I buy that he was just an average level coach. You go back and look at what his offenses did at Arizona State. You go back and look at what he did at, um, at Memphis. And I would say no. Like, he didn't just all of a sudden forget how to coach football. I also think that you can have a whole bunch of talent. And I think Florida State does have a whole bunch of talent on this team. And just because they had a lot of talent last year doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to win as many games as you do, right? There's a lot of talented teams. Look at A&M once Jimbo got there that are really, really talented. Uh, shoot, I think LSU was more talented than Florida State last year, and you you still throttled them both years. And so, no, I would not agree that Norvell is just an average coach to a bad coach that just I don't I don't buy the whole caught lightning in a bottle. Uh, he had to coach that team and had to make them really good, right? There there were years that Kobe and Shaq, I mean, yeah, Phil Jackson always coached Kobe or Shaq or, or Michael, but there were years when my, Phil wasn't coaching Michael and look what the Bulls were doing. There were years where Phil wasn't the coach for Kobe and Shaq and look what the Lakers were doing. So no, I do think that Norvell is, you know, it, it certainly his reputation has taken a hit, but I don't think last year was just some kind of fluke, right? Just looking at his overall career. Now, all that said, like, is he in over his head right now? Did, did he also, like, does he also get credit for destroying the program or having it fall off the cliff this year? Absolutely. But I don't think that takes away from winning 19 games in a row over the two years before that. I even think in 2021, and I'll wrap up and let Richie answer, I even think in 2021, they started out 0-4, and, and he went 5-3 and three down the stretch. And the three losses were, you know, one against Clemson, where they had a lead with three minutes to go. Um, one against Florida and uh, on the road as a three point dog, and then one against NC State where your quarterback was hurt and you had a bunch of guys out with the flu, and they covered the spread in all three of those games. And so, yeah, no, I don't, I don't think so. I think you can look at the end of twenty one, all of twenty two, all of twenty twenty three, and say like, no, he's probably a, still like he didn't just forget. I think what would be best for him is to start over somewhere else and not have to dig his way out of this again with everything that's happened. But I, I don't think so. Richie, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I, I think most people listening, um, if you're a diehard, you probably know the name, but if you're just a casual listener, and I don't know how many casual listeners are, are tuning in for a one and eight preview against Notre Dame, uh, but the name Brady White, right? Mike Norvell had a phenomenal season with him as his quarterback at Memphis. Um, he had several very good years at Memphis, and, you know, clearly he built the program from three and six to five and seven to 10 and three to 13 and 0. He is a good coach. I just think he made some very, very poor miscalculations, and I don't know if he can recover from this. And that sucks because I think if at his next job, because I don't think he's going to be here three, four years from now, I think at his next job he could absolutely, he's still young, he could reinvent himself and become one of the top ten coaches in college football again. I think he's not forgotten how to coach, but I think he just made so many miscalculations, whether it be the roster, his coaching staff, the organization as a whole. And I, I don't know if he can recover at Florida State, but I do think he could recover somewhere else. And that's kind of where my thoughts are with him. Yeah, it is a good question, though, because I do think that narrative is, is so um... – so prevalent, like, oh, he just one time caught lightning in a bottle, you know. I no, just don't we think we really see that. Improvement from year to year. Even yeah, we, we certainly improved. Year, you felt really good about the the end of that season. Yeah, and, and you also like it, you know, 
if you want to say like at Florida State did that, you know, like because his overall right. But, you know, are you going to discount everything he did at Memphis, you know, and, and the success he had there, you know? And so, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say that. I think he could still be a good coach. I don't know if that it's going to happen at Florida State, unfortunately. Yeah, agree. Um, Richie, but that's a great question, Omar, and I appreciate you sending it in. 